Alrighty, let's talk about anime. Yeah, it's been a hot minute since I made one of these videos. And speaking of that, just wanted to let you know, this video is going to be a bit different in the fact that it's not really a video at all. I'm just going to slap an image in the background. I'm not going to bother battling the copyright demons. Uh, more than a few, like, I think almost all of my anime videos are, like, monetized, and I don't like internet ads, so I'd rather not have them monetized, and two of my videos have straight up just been blocked worldwide, despite the fact that they were talking both about My Hero Academia, and they were basically just gushing about that show for the entirety. Seriously, why, why won't you let me love you, My Hero Academia? Why? But that's besides the point. Just FYI, just put this thing in the background, download it, and treat it like a podcast, I don't care. Just so you don't know, you're not going to be missing any fantastic visual gags or anything if you decide to watch this just staring at the screen. But anyways, let's continue onwards. Did you know that there is a legal way to watch Kara no Kyokai, or as it's translated, The Garden of Sinners? Because up until recently, neither did I. Like, this, this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first... Thing. This is the first collaboration between UFO Table, the anime studio that looks like it burns money to power the buildings and computers they use to make anime, and Type Moon, the studio behind the Nasuverse, a collection of, you know, stories and um, different alternate universes and timelines, all revolving around mages and like this world with this certain brand of magecraft which doesn't make much sense it's just it's very convoluted very complicated it's basically the universe where the fate fate slash whatever the hell appeared in nasu's english word of the day calendar is the whole holy grail war with seven mages and seven servants trying to kill each other but we're not talking about that we're talking about a spin-off of a spin-off it's sort of like a prototype see there are these two mainline series there is the fate fate um universe and then there is the notes universe where it's like vampires never existed i believe is the big divergence and also at one point the world kind of starts dying and calls upon, like, these super aliens from outer space, each representing a planet in order to kill of all of humanity because we kill the planet. And it's just really complicated and really convoluted and really weird. But Kara no Kyokai takes place in this sort of alternate universe. It is a prototype of... Basically, it's like a prototype story of Tsukihime, which was a visual novel and nothing else. It was nothing else. There was no anime. It doesn't matter what Wikipedia says, there was no anime. But anyways, Kara no Kyokai revolves around the story of these two characters. One is Shiki Ryogi, and the other is characters so bland and just just there, whose name I can't remember. Plus with a couple of supporting characters, one being a red-haired mage who, oh god, oh god, I can't, I'm really bad with names, okay, I can't remember any of these people's names, but yeah, we have a red-haired mage who performs magic all of twice in the entire series, and I mean, she's a secondary character, but seriously, she's like, she's made out to be this big deal in the mage community, yet we only ever see her perform magic in two of the sort of movie slash episodes more on why i call them that later and the little sister of mr bland or an original vanilla human who is a mage in training herself and the one episode that focuses on her is basically uses more magic than said master does in the entire series it's kind of it's kind of weird but yeah this is a collection of seven stories written by nasu himself the just sort of writer of all this and correct me if I'm wrong. And he, this is also... The anime itself contains two other self-contained stories. One, a collection of sort of moments in the life. And another, which is a sort of full-on movie against, you know, pitting Ryogi against this sort of mad bomber with a future-telling power. So he can tell where to place his bombs the best, which is like a big, big super overpowered but yeah these um 
I call them, like, I hesitate to call them movies, but I hesitate to call them episodes as well, because they range in time between, like, a 30-minute, like, just slice of life, here are a few little goofs and gags and little interactions between characters, and, like, a two-hour movie about Miss Ryogi can kill anything versus cannibal cross-dressing stalker person, and... I, I'm not joking about that. It is literally a cannibal cross-dresser. It's really... It's, and it's also one of the hypest, epi, epi, eh, hypest of the movies. It's really cool. It's... Yeah. But let's get back to it. It starts off... First of all, the story is told out of order. It's told in a very strange way. We start with how the two meet, kind of. And then we are sort of thrust between the future and the past. And just told... You know, given different facts in a sort of disjointed way, but I think is very good. I've watched this anime both in the way it was released and in chronological order, and I can say, just watch it in the way it was released. If you do so like that, the story is told in a very interesting way, which will leave you going, which will leave you a bit surprised and will leave you... Um, the best way to describe it is that it just, it feeds you certain revelations, like, your thrust, it's like, in multiple times during this time, it was like I was thrust in a completely new world in media res, and I was just like, oh, this is weird, this is interesting, but at the same time, it's like, little bits and pieces of the character's background and story would be revealed, so it's like, oh, why did this character change in such a way? Oh, this is why they changed in such such a way, you know, coming the next movie or like move two movies down or so on and so forth. So yeah, in regards of the viewing order, it's going to be really weird going from the first movie, which is like a place where it, sh where it starts like, okay, I can understand this as a starting point. But the second movie, which is just like two years later, and it's like, whoa, this is weird. Lots of things have happened. When did that character get a robot arm? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But it just tells the story in a really interesting way, and I highly, highly suggest you watch it that way. Plus the fact that the animation, of course, being made by a UFO table looks like, you know, they burn money to power their computers. Is just, it looks phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. Watch it just oh it looks so good but yeah you know this is a straight up 8 out of 10 9 out of 10 this also if of all of the fate universe nasuverse stuff i feel like this is the one that best explains itself because there's a few terms and there's a few just things in universe knowledge which is never explained in like the fate series that always confuse me but in the you know, Garden of Sinners, it's like, it's self-contained. You don't need to do a deep wiki dive to understand what's going on, which is another, you know, just thumbs up in its direction. It's a very good set of anime. You should watch it. It's fantastic. Okay. Okay, but I know what you're thinking. What is this anime about? Well, it's about the story of um, Shiki Ryogi and his friend who is just a bland, unoriginal, vanilla human person. Like, the everyman to an aggressive degree. I mean, an aggressive degree. But yeah, it's just like, he sees this ch chick called Shiki, and he decides, I'm gonna befriend you. And she's like, no, fuck off. I'm doing this whole emotionless ice princess thing. And he's like, okay, I'm still gonna befriend you. And she's like, dude, what are you doing? And, like, she has no choice. But to, like, okay, you've grown on me like a fungus or, like, an STD. But eventually, you know, as they come to know each other, he learns about the fact that she has two personalities. Um, one of them being a female personality, which is the Ice Princess, and one of them being a male personality who is very outgoing. Who also, as he tells as he tells him, just straight up loves murder. Like, oh, I have this urge to kill constantly, and if we are together for some for an extended amount of time, the, you know, chance that I'm going to kill you rises exponentially, and of course, every man is just like, all right, okay, that's worth it. So yeah, then a string of murder starts, and he goes, oh, you know, I have a friend who's told me he's really, she, he's really into murder, and it's like, nah, he can't be it, and like, he finds her standing over, like, dead bodies and stuff, and he's like, nah, I don't believe you're the murderer. 
And yeah, just kind of, it's a little slice of life drama thing. It's, there is a bit of a suspense thriller moment where it's like, maybe she's gonna kill him and go the whole like, hey, I told you I was gonna kill you. Now I have a knife and I'm standing over you and I'm gonna kill you. And there's a bit of a suspenseful moment for the most, but for the most part in this, the first one, it's just a, the interactions between the characters. It's just really fascinating dialogue. It just looks nice. It looks pretty. It's a pretty good, it, it sets the tone for the series and it's good at hooking you in. And it's just, if you love to see characters discuss things and interact in interesting ways, then it's a very good little movie. But then we go to the second movie, and we learn that years have passed, and that there is this string of suicides that they are, you know, the older everyday man is investigating along with Shiki, and they're also employed underneath this red-haired uh, person who seems to be running some sort of detective agency focusing on the occult. And there they learn about a string of suicides, all of which are committed at this one apartment building. And Shiki goes and then, you know, sees that there are ghosts there and they are compelling people in order to commit this murders. And we also learn that she has somehow gained the superpower of death perception. Now, when I say death perception, I mean as in death, as in die, as in the Grim Reaper. And what this means is that she can see lines in all living things, including spirits and ghosts and such, and even inanimate objects like walls and like steel and just stuff like that. And if she has a knife, or she can cut through them. And it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter who it is, it doesn't matter what it is. I already said that, didn't I? But if she, you know, stabs one of these lines with a knife and traces it, then it's dead. It's gone. It's cut through. It is over. It cannot heal. This is like it dies along that line. Like if she cuts someone's limb off, even though that character said that they could like eat meat to regenerate, they cannot anymore because that limb is dead. It is gone. That's her basic superpower. So we go from like, so we go from this like fight with like ghosts. And, like, she, like, fights these ghosts and ends up confronting the source of the problem. And just this nice little, you know, a little bit of investigation, a little bit of action, a nice little blend of the two. And that's how, like, the sort of series feels like it goes around. There's one episode slash movie, depending on the length, where it's just people talking, people discussing philosophy, and just really, really good character interactions and just really interesting and just world building moments that just oh they're just great and then we have seen we have ones that while they still carry those world building and just character interactions there was also a lot of action mostly consisting of shiki cutting the ever-loving shit out of everything and it's great it's fantastic but anyways the garden of sinners is just uh it's just it's just good it's just really good it's like the only downside to this I can see is that one of the episodes is just 30 minutes of, like, filler and slice of life stuff, but that's, like, some bonus anime thing they made. And the fact that it's on Am Anim Amazon's Anime Strike, which means it's behind a double paywall unless you're part of Amazon Prime, in which case it's behind, like, a single paywall. But it's just, it's a very good anime. It's just good. It's infinitely watchable. The characters, they bounce off each other in interesting ways. And when it decides it wants to make a cool fight scene, the fight scenes are actually really cool. So yeah, Garden of Sinners. I just I just wanted to talk about this for a while. I wanted to talk about something anime for a bit. But yeah, that's the um, Garden of Sinners. Go watch it on Anime Strike. Link in the description. If you have that seven-day trial, 14-day trial, just, you know, use that up. This is well worth the binge if you are, I don't know. Hmm. Let's think. Uh, that, that, that I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. I'm just rambling at this point. I've just, oh, God. I can't, like, write scripts and stuff are just hard at this moment. But that's besides the point. It's a good anime. Go watch it. If you have the Anime Strike free trial still, go use it for that. If you don't, then 
it's well worth paying for a month to just watch this. These are very good, very well animated animes, and they just, they're great. They're great, good, good, great. I've said that word like enough times and it no longer makes any sense. But yeah, that's just been me with my opinions on Kara no Kyokai, otherwise known as the Garden of Sinners. If you like this video, you know, like it. And if you didn't, you, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Check out the links in the description to my website, which I will now begin updating with videos so you can see all of my videos. Also, feel free to take a look at my, oh god, at my Patreon if you want to support this. You're probably not going to want it because this is just me rambling about an anime I liked for about 15 minutes. But yeah, that's besides the point. But yeah, that's about it for right now. I shall see you all later. Also, by the way, this is, oh god, what? No. Yeah, no, I'm just, oh god, I'm sleep deprived and I'm doing this scriptless and it is hot garbage, holy shit. So, yeah, goodbye everybody. Juan John John out.